Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Vivid Memories by Floodgate Games. The game is designed by Matthew Dunstan and Brett J. Gilbert and art by Andrew Bosley. The game plays two to four players, takes roughly 30 to 60 minutes to play, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game Vivid Memories, you are going to be attempting to earn and live memories or moments in time. You will gather memories, you will store them, and they will become relevant or important memories. And you're going to be using your board. This board here is going to involve all the different pieces of your life and how you connect them in certain ways, utilizing these tokens here. These tokens are going to be positioned in certain portions of this board here, and hopefully you'll be able to make core connections and store everlasting or long-lasting memories. And uh, the game's kind of a, a nice tie-in to a puzzle game meets kind of a narrative game that you can kind of form all on your own. After a total of three rounds, the game will end, and whoever has the most points based on the most memories they can complete, uh, as well as, of course, how they make their board here, will be the winner of the game Vivid Memories. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll explain how to set the game up. So to set up a game of Vivid Memories, it's pretty much set up the same way for all players, uh, except for a few small key details, which I'll explain as we go. The first things first, everybody's going to get a player board, and there can be up to four different players in the game. Then go ahead and give every single player a card or a reference card that they will be utilizing to not only know what their different actions are going to be available for them, but also the end of game scoring, and um, they're going to have the end of round actions as well. You're also going to go ahead and give each player one of these tiles here. This is basically a scoring tile for the end of the game, which is going to make you focus on one specific type of memory. Additionally, every single player is going to choose a pair of scoring tokens. Like for instance, I took this one, this is like a dodgeball, and I'm going to put one on the zero uh, track on the scoreboard here, and I'm going to put one on my player board to remind me that that is my specific type of ball, or I guess memory, maybe it's my favorite sport. Then that will be done for all of the different player boards and player areas, except for give one player, maybe the most recent player to play the game or have a vivid dream of the first player token. Uh, then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to place all of the tokens into the bag based on the number of players. So in a four player game, you will put 20 of each tiles or tokens or tiles, whatever you want to call them. They're like uh, the plastic pieces into the bag. And then you're going to set out the rest of them uh, into a supply that's going to be utilized throughout the game. After that, you're going to then take out a certain number of these guys here uh, in a four player game, you're going to put out six, and I think it's number of players plus two. And then in a four or five player game, you're also gonna take out tiles from the bag here, and you're gonna put five down on each of the different piece uh, tokens here. Once you have done that and secured all the different pieces, and hopefully you have a nice assortment of colors on all these guys here, uh, set aside the scoreboard, you'll be using it throughout the game, and of course the rule book, and you are ready to begin. Okay, so let's go ahead and discuss how you're going to play the game. First of all, after the game has been set up and you have all of these uh, memory tiles uh, laid out along with their uh, scoring tokens or these, these tokens you'll be using throughout the game on them, the first player will be able to select on either end of the line uh, w uh, one, two, or three of these pieces here. And the way you select them is this way. If you take one, you can take either one on either side. So you can select uh, uh, maybe on this side here, two green, one of the two, two green, one of the two purple, or the blue. On the other end, it's one of the two blue, one of the two red, or a yellow. You're never going to be able to take any on the inside until the other ones from the outside have been removed. If you want to take two tiles, you can do that. But you must take two tiles of the same color, and they must be on the end of either line. In this case, I could take two green from the left-hand side because there are two green on the farthest end tile. Another option, and your final option, is you can take three. If you take three, though, you have to take one of each different color. So in this case, I could take a green, a blue, and a purple from the end here. There is a few things to note. Number one is if you only take one tile, you're going to be able to do something called a rewire, uh, which is going to be important um, more so uh, not the first round of the game, but uh, in previous or, or in previous turns, I should say. How a rewire works is once you take one tile and place it on this board here, you're then going to be able to choose any tile space on your board, and you're going to be able to move all of the tokens out from that tile into adjacent spaces, 
or bring any tiles or tokens from adjacent spaces into that tile. When you take these guys here after choosing one, two, or three, regardless of the number, you're going to then choose an empty hex space and place down these pieces into that hex space. You can't set them anywhere you want on the board. You can't mix and match them. They must be chosen on an empty hex tile space. If there's just one that you take, that would work the same way. But do know, when you do take one, you're able to rewrite, which allows you to kind of push and pull pieces into locations that you want them to go to. The next thing to note is, after all of the tiles have been taken off of one of these memory tiles, the player who takes the last tile from that space is going to get this memory, which they'll be able to utilize in a current portion of the round. If they take this memory, they're going to go ahead and store it or bank it next to their player board, and uh, they'll be utilizing it later. You just kind of set it aside for now. And the game is just going to continue like that. People taking turns, choosing one, two, or three. One, two, or three in the basic rules of any one, a pair of two, or three different types. If, for instance, there are only two different types on one specific tile, you can choose to take those two different types and one of a different type from an adj the adjacent tile inward. So you can always take more as long as the previous tile is, has run out. But you're also going to note that you'll have to take the tile that you removed all of the tokens from. And that is said for all the different types of taking, all the different tile takings. Um, and that's basically how that round plays out. Eventually all these are going to be taken and, and each player is going to at least probably have maybe one, maybe two. You might not even have any if you're unlucky, I suppose, or choose not to take them. But then you're going to move on to basically uh, scoring. And scoring is pretty simple, basically, how the end of the round works. You're going to look at your board, and you are going to perform any tile and memory bank actions. And how that works is you're going to take your actions or memory actions or memory tiles that you got and place them in one of the areas on your board. And if you have multiple of them, you can place them uh, in multiple areas. Once you have placed them, you're then going to be able to take the actions on your board, whether it be one of your memory tiles or whether it be one of the generic ones. And they're all explained in the rules and also on the back of your player reference. Like one of them will let you move a tile from one space to another or swap tiles or grab a tile at random from the bag and place it on an empty space and so on and so forth. The memory tiles will let you switch one tile into two or place one tile uh, from the supply onto a space. And whenever you use a generic action, you're just gonna take a random token that you're not utilizing and place it on there to show that you've done it. This is a kind of a free-for-all phase where everybody can choose any of the actions they want at the same time. So as long as there is enough things stored in the bank, players can just try and move along this phase as quickly as they'd like. If you flip over one of your memory tiles, meaning you have utilized its ability, it is now in a scoring mode. And if you can, uh, if you can score it, you must score it, right? So you're always attempting to get points with this guy. And each of them have a unique scoring method. One is a three color uh, in one specific space, and another is a two color. And they're worth six, or they're worth, I believe, four points, yes. And you'll look at your board, and you'll check to see how many of these specific areas on the board are going to be scoring for you. If you score them, you'll move them to the side, and these will become memories that you'll save at the end of the game, because they will net you bonus points if they have a matching color with your secret objective tile. And you can score as many of those as you can humanly possible, possibly do. The next portion of the end of the round is you'll score your um, thread tiles. So after scoring these moment tiles, where you actually be using, utilizing these boards to move it down, you'll score the threads. Um, and how threads work is pretty simple. On your board, you're going to see on the very ends of it uh, a bunch of these core memory spaces. And you're going to be trying to link them up, a blue with a blue, or a blue with a blue with a blue, or a yellow with a yellow. And you'll be linking them up with the same um, colors. So for instance, if I wanted to connect a red with a red, what I would want to do is I would want to have four spaces linked just like this, as you can see, this red space to this red space. When you do so, it's pretty simple. You'll add up all the hexes that connect them, forming one singular line, and then you'll multiply it by the amount of blank core memory spaces. So in this case, it's four times two, which is eight points. Then you'll fill the outlining areas uh, with one of the colors that is going to connect them and place them in those areas to signify that a core memory slot has been filled and leave the rest alone. 
and that's going to be how you score all of those. You can get like a seven times three bonus. You can get like a nine times two bonus. It's really just dependent on how you choose to create those memory banks. Uh, then you're going to check to see if you can score any core memories. So after you've made your thread and scored on your core, then you're going to check to see if your the little areas in the board will score you. So for instance, if you have this yellow one in the middle here, that'll score you one point. If you have all three of these in this area here, that'll score you 18. And what's nice about these guys is every end of round, if you have all of these areas filled in, you'll score for each of them that you do. Unlike the threads where it's only a one-time shot, in which case you'll be moving them out. And once you've utilized them, once they're filled, you cannot connect them in any way to score additional points. And then from there, after all of these like memory banks have been removed, you'll start or refresh the round. You'll move your memory around token over to the next round, which is there's three in total. You'll take out uh, five or six more of these guys and take out some more of these tiles from the bag and place them on here. And then you'll continue. And it won't be until the very end of the round where you'll score this objective. I think it's called the aspiration tile. You'll flip this over and you'll score one point for each of your color on your board, uh, two points for each of the core memory spaces of your color filled in, and five points for each of your memory cards that have a color of yours in there. So if I am blue and this tile has blue in it, I will score five points. There's a lot that goes on in this game and it seems like it's very complex as far as the scoring goes, but it's really, really straightforward and simple once you get through the first portion of the round. Taking these things, placing them on your board in an empty space, then after you finish all of those, keep your memories that you've stored, and then try and form threads. Try and create core memory slots and fill in those areas. And then score additional points with your aspirations at the end of the game. Whoever has the most points is the winner. And like I said, you'll keep track of your score with these tokens across this scoring track. And if you get over 100, you'll simply flip over your token to the 100 space, and you will continue from there moving around the board. And that is the game Vivid Memories by Floodgate Games. Let me tell you what I think about it. So when I first picked out Vivid Memories and like pulled out all the pieces and components, I was actually fairly confused. I, I knew where the core memory slots were going to be, I, I knew that these were going to be utilizing these tokens here, but I didn't actually know what went in here because I didn't actually see any like hexagonal uh, tiles that you'd be placing in here. And because that's because you're going to be placing these guys in here and up to three for each space. And I, as I went through the rules, I'm like, oh, that's really cool. You'll be able to form connections. And it doesn't really matter in what order you place them in a singular space, just that so they connect in order to form a line to create core memories. And this game is all about memories, and you're forming these lines, you're trying to fill in these spaces, trying to score points, but it's all relevant as to what you're trying to do, not only in the memories that you're able to take from the board here, or from this memory line here, but also for your aspiration. This is your main color in the game. Other players might be able to recognize that and start removing your color if they think you're ahead. So there's a little bit of a twist a little bit of a push and pull or take that kind of in the game, but it's very, very, very light. This is all kind of a more relaxed kumbaya style play, except for when you lose the tiles or the pieces that you may want from the board. But other than that, it's really, really straightforward. Creating those webbing branches that will basically let you fill in those core slots, scoring tons of points. Uh, recognize though that there are certain core slots that are gonna have 18. Most likely you're not going to score those until round three or even just one of them until round three. So be aware of that when attempting to uh, complete them. This game is kind of, uh, one of those games where you're never going to get everything you want to do completed and you're never going to have all the different tiles you want and on the other end uh, you might end up with additional uh, memory tiles because you can't score them if you have not used them and you do not have to use all of your abilities and if you do utilize them and you do not have anything on, um, that connects them then you won't get any points so you have to kind of uh, do a give and take when it comes to how you want to score those tiles the component quality and artwork is Fantastic. I love it. It's thick. It has a great texture to it. Uh, it was smart too, the fact that the uh, one of the ends of the board is thinner than the other one so that it works really well when placing down pieces and cards into those slots. Uh, the fact that you're utilizing these plastic pieces with their own little types of symbols is really nice as well. 
One thing that was confusing to me is there's a ton of player tokens, uh, which you're basically going to use to fill in your abilities whenever you cho do choose to fill them in, if you want to utilize them, I suppose. But uh, it would have been nice to just have four different player selection tokens, and then maybe uh, specific tokens that, re that recognize uh, that these have been utilized. I don't, I don't really know why I was like, why did they just do that? But it's not, it's such a like very light gripe of mine that I shouldn't even be harping on it. The way the game is uh, played feels great. I enjoyed the first, second, and third round uh, exponentially. It got better and better as I played. The one thing I really wish is that they had a fourth round. I wanted to do more in the game. And usually that's a good thing. Like, I wish I could complete this, but I understand why. Maybe I'll play again. But in this one, it actually would have been nice if I could have had just a little bit more to do just a few more things in the game, which I guess as a house rule, I might try just to see if I like it. Yes, the scoring will be higher and there's more opportunity for things to happen, but I think it might be more it might be more engaging for me to have an extra round just to see those really big point totals. But like I said, another thing that's kind of just a slight small gripe because I wanted to have just, just a little bit more gameplay. And I think that was uh, nice. And I think most people at the table agreed with me, but as it stands, it is really a wonderful game. And you don't need to have that in order to enjoy the game and experience it and be able to fin finish those core memories, be able to create those lines in your, in your, in your diagram here or in like, kind of like in your mind it's like your brain and like you're storing these memories that attach together in certain ways utilizing tiles that kind of remember you remember something like here's a kid with an airplane and then next thing you know now he's flying an airplane so it does that kind of like it goes from one step to the next step and it's very dreamy it's very very pixar -y in a way as well anyway I, I dig this game. Pretty much everything about it I very, very much do enjoy. It is a puzzle game though. I'm not very good with it. And other than those very small minor gripes, this is probably one of, if not honestly, my favorite Floodgate game I have yet to play. I have really, really, really enjoyed this game. And I think a lot of players who like the games that Floodgate comes out with are really, really gonna like Vivid Memories. This one's gonna stay on my shelf for quite a while and probably replace one, if not two games, just because I like this one better than both of those styles of games. But I'll probably talk about that in another video. Anyway, guys, that's pretty much what I gotta say about it. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick up Vivid Memories. I believe it just came out uh, for Kickstarter backers, so it should be coming out shortly for the rest of you, if not already. And there will be a link in the description if, if uh, there is one available and when there is one available. But yes, check out this game if you like puzzle games. I highly, highly recommend it. Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered game or board game review for the game Vivid Memories by Floodgate Games. Like I said, there's a link in the description. Additionally, if you would like to subscribe, hit that like button, push that bell notification button for this channel, it greatly helps and we do greatly appreciate it. Additionally, if you'd like, you can check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. A new giveaway is coming out today. And so you're gonna to get to see a giveaway uh, that you can go ahead and back and hopefully you'll win. And in addition to that, there should be a new blog post popping up as well on the website for other, from other reviewers, other writers, not even myself. So you kind of get a nice mix and match. match. And sometimes we do the same game and you can see different perspectives in written and in video form from different people, which is, I guess, kind of nice. If you want to, you can join in on Patreon for $1. Appreciate it, but not required. And the last thing is Moonshell backers, the Lux backers, should be hopefully getting their games very soon, if not already. I know that it's really close. And then after that, anybody who's missing any copies or missing any components or whatever, we're gonna take care of that from us on our end here. And you can go ahead and leave us a message down below, well, not down below, sorry, but down in our email or of course on our Facebook and our Instagram and we will be able to get back to you there once we know. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to having some vivid memories with you next time.